So today's video is going to be fast and furious. I am going to speak about 10 stocks across 10 industries which according to me are likely to do fairly well in the future. So you need to watch this video with the lens of long term investing. Before jumping into the video let me tell you a very quick story about my friend. So my friend bought like very expensive shoes. He came to me and he said that you know Akshat I have bought these shoes. Guess the price of these shoes. So I am just referencing a photo here. Aise kuch dikhte te, jute. So I thought yeah, you know most expensive shoe that I have is like four or five thousand right and uh, Nike jute. Right, so I mean, that is the most expensive one. Maybe this would be like 10,000. So I guess 10,000. He said, You know, have you gone crazy? These are like Balenciaga shoes, and the cost of this shoe I bought it from Singapore, it is like 75,000. My mind was blown. 75,000 rupee shoes, right? It was like crazy. Said, Which company is this? So he said, They are Balenciaga. So I, I, I had no clue what Balenciaga was. So I went back home, I started searching what Balenciaga is. Then I figured out that the company is selling like shoes worth 2 to 3 3 lakhs also. This is absolute crazy stuff. Now the important point and the reason why I'm telling you this story is that businesses that have pricing power dominate the world. So one of the stocks that I'm going to speak about on this video, if you continue to watch it, that is my favorite stock out of these 10 stocks and I will reveal the name also. And that is quickly becoming one of the biggest luxury companies in the world. Okay, so with that said, let us kickstart our video and the first industry that I'm going to speak about is the artificial intelligence industry and my favorite stock within this industry is a company called as SMCI. This is an all integrated player based out of the US. So it is a type of a mid cap AI company. What it typically does is that it is building the AI infrastructure for its clients. For example, chips are kafi manufacture hoti hai, data architecture system needs to be built, cloud computing abilities need to be built. So SMCI is trying to become a one stop solution for its clients' AI oriented needs. I had done a separate video on this topic so you can go and check it out. I will not delve into excessive details here but let me quickly touch upon some numbers. So the first number is that you must understand the AI growth story that in India the AI industry is likely to grow at roughly 35% CAGR. In the world it is likely to grow at roughly 25% CAGR. A lot of work will be done in the US. So what makes SMCI really strong is the fact that a lot of US based domestic demand will be served by companies such as SMCI. A parallel example would be that when the banking digital architecture was built, companies like TCS, Infosys, they built a lot of banking softwares. Now again, a value migration is happening from IT industries or core IT or software type of work onto artificial intelligence fields. For example, chat GPT is an application of AI. Even Google is working on improving its search engine by using AI enabled technologies. So the AI technology is going to redefine our world. Now every country is going to hunt for its domestic winners in this field and they are the ones that are going to do a lot of business in that particular geography. Similarly, if AI solutions have to be implemented in India, then some Indian company is going to benefit a lot from it. Right now the story is that see this AI thing is picking up. America is a very strong market and their domestic players are going to benefit out of this. So from that particular perspective, I feel that SMCI is poised for a massive growth. It is already exhibiting that. For example, if I show you the stock price, you will see that it has grown massively over the last few months. But the growth story, according to me, is not over yet. It has just started because the total investment in the AI space, as it keeps on picking up, companies like SMCI are going to benefit a lot. Now the risk factor on the stock is its current stock price and you can see that it has gone up quite aggressively and I had been aggregating the stock for the last six months. So I am sitting on massive profits on this stock. So my push is that please learn about the stock. Don't think it immediately from an investment viewpoint. Learn about it. Learn about the AI industry. So do you want to know how you can learn AI and chat GPT for free? Growth School runs a paid three hour workshop on mastering chat GPT and generative AI. This is run by Web of Sisinthi, who is the founder of Growth School. And and I have personally attended this workshop and he has explained a lot of features about chat GPT and artificial intelligence industry in general in very easy, simple to understand language. So I would give a fairly high rating for this workshop and I have requested Webov to conduct a free workshop for my students and the first 1000 people who will sign up using the link below, they can attend this workshop absolutely free of cost. Yes, you heard it right. Absolutely for free. 
Now we all know that chat GPT is disrupting the world almost every single job. Be it content creation, be it software designing, be it research, AI is interrupting that space. So whether you are a student, whether you are a working professional, whether you are a freelancer, whether you are a founder or trying to start your company, this workshop is going to help you learn a lot of tools around chat GPT and how you can use artificial intelligence to get better at your job. Growth School helps people become top 1% in their field and over the last few years they have been able to coach roughly half a million students. They have taught students about latest technologies like no code, web3 and now AI and chat GPT. People like Mr. Kunal Chah has invested in their startup so if this sounds good to you do consider joining their workshop. The link you can find in the description and comment box. Remember, it is free for the first 1000 people. Now the second stock that I would like to speak about comes from the healthcare segment. And here I feel that major hospital chains in India are likely to do fairly well in the long term. Now if I show you the landscape of the Indian healthcare industry right now, it is sitting at a pivotal moment. The first key reason for that is that our population is going to age by the year 2065. But before that two things are going to happen. One is that there is going to be an increased demand for healthcare in India because more and more people are buying insurance and everything will get tied to the hospital sector per se. Even these days, you would have started noticing that when you go to do any ilaj in the hospital, the first thing the doctor asks is that do you have insurance? Insurance, hota hai, so they put like more bill on you, right? So that is the reality and you can comment and let me know whether this is truly happening or not. I have personally seen it, so I can vouch for this fact. Second related point is that medical tourism in India is also increasing quite aggressively. A lot of Western countries, the cost of healthcare has just become mind numbing. Now, if a US citizen or if a British citizen or if a Singaporean citizen comes to India for ilaj, where are they going to go? Are they going to go to like basic clinics? The answer is no. They are mostly going to go to like Apollo, Fortis, Max, all these type of big, big hospitals only. So if you study the ecosystem or healthcare ecosystem in India, then the two biggest chains are Apollo hospitals and Max hospital. So both of these are good stocks according to me, but I personally prefer Max. The reason there are a few so first and foremost the p ratio of max hospital as of now is lower than that of apollo hospital so there is room for expansion second take a look at this snippet here so you will categorically see that they have some expansion plans that are going on so far max hospital has been north based for example up delhi and cr region if you're there so you will see a lot of max hospitals now they are aggressively expanding so you'll see that they are undertaking some brownfield expansion brownfield expansion means ki they are not creating things from scratch they are simply converting existing facilities under the Max brand. So that is what they are doing and one of the good things that I like about Mac Hospital is that right now their debt is relatively lower. It's only 9% debt to equity. But if you look it up for Apollo, you will see that their debt is fairly high. So from that particular perspective, I personally feel that Max is better than Apollo. Am I an investor in either? The short answer is no. I am waiting for the right time to buy this stock. If I get it at good price, I will buy it. Otherwise. I'll reevaluate and see when it needs to be bought from my portfolio's perspective. So over to the third industry and third stock, these are commodity stocks. Now, what is the meaning of commodity stocks? A lot of you are super excited, you know what? Oil prices, gold prices, so all these are commodities, oil, gold, wheat, rice, all these are commodity products. Even tomato is a commodity, but it's a very highly volatile commodity. So very, very difficult to guess the pricing cycle of commodity, which brings me to a related point that whenever it comes to any commodity, be it gold, be it wheat, be it rice, be it barley, they all have long cycles. Now what is the meaning of cycle? Let me quickly work that through by explaining you oil cycles and then I will speak about my favorite stock from this industry. So here is the price chart of oil cycle. What you will see is that see it goes up, then the prices come down, then it grows up, then it goes up, then the price comes down. So what ends up happening is that if you're looking at this point, this point, this point. Now if you have purchased a stock here here or here or towards the lower end if you buy it here and if you sell it here then it corresponds to the firm for example if you consider oil india limited then if you would have purchased oil india limited somewhere here when the oil prices are low and when the oil prices became high even the oil india limited stock would have gone up so 
दिस बिकम्स लाइक अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक यार कमोडिटी प्राइजेज वी विल गेस एंड वी विल बी एबल टू मेक क्रेजी मनी वेल साउंड गुड इन थियोरी बट दिस इज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गेस दैट टू वॉट पॉइंट अ कमोडिटी प्राइज विल मूव सो इम्पॉसिबल टू गेस कमोडिटी प्राइजेज बट यू कैन डेफिनेटली सी वेन दी कमोडिटी प्राइजेज आर कमिंग डाउन फॉर सर्टन टाइप्स ऑफ कमोडिटी सो विद दैट रिस्पेक्ट माई फेवरेट स्टॉक इन दिस कैटेगरी इज अ स्टॉक कॉल्ड एज के आर बी एल सो वॉट डज इट डू इट बेसिकली सेल्स बासमती राइस ना राइस इज अ कमोडिटी एंड बासमती राइस इज दी प्रीमियम सेगमेंट विद इन दैट राइस सो इफ आई शो यू द प्राइज ऑफ राइस राइट नाउ इट पीड समवेयर अराउंड नाइनटीन रुपीज राइट नाउ द प्राइज इज समवेयर अराउंड फिफ्टीन रुपीज सो राइट नाउ हाउ मच हैज बीन द डिस्काउंट सो ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी परसेंट राइस प्राइस हैव बीन ब्रोकन ना ऑन टॉप ऑफ दिस यू नीड टू कंसिडर द फैक्ट दैट दिस इज द जनरल राइस प्राइस ना इफ यू कंसिडर समथिंग लाइक बास मती ना बास मती राइस इज द प्रीमियम वर्जन सो वहां पे इफ द प्राइस गोज अप वंस इट्स अनलाइकली दैट इट इज गोइंग टू फॉल ड्रामेटिकली फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट बिकॉज दैट बासमती राइस इज ईटन बाय मोर एफ्लुएंट पीपल सो टू से सो फ्रॉम दैट पर्टिकुलर परस्पेक्टिव now no one can guess that you know what prices of rice is going to get crushed till here there is no data to prove it but if we build position on a right commodity at right price then it is likely that you will see some benefits on it now add to that the fact that krbl has fallen quite aggressively so let me show you some data around the company as well so it used to trade at what like almost 650 rupees right now it is at 370 380 rupees so 40% correction has already happened it is in a cycle and what is the cycle that is going on so this cycle is going on now it might happen like this then it will make a reverse head and shoulder most likely like this and then it is likely to go up will this change happen very very aggressively the answer is no this entire cycle might take like 4 5 years to transpire but the rice price has corrected by 15% but krbls stock price has corrected by 40% so please remember that this is an important point and i hope that you understood at least the basics of it now you can keep this stock on your radar and do your analysis accordingly Okay so in the banking industry which is my favorite stock right now so of course it's HDFC bank because it is a very strong bank but HDFC bank is not the type of a bank that can go from approximately it must be trading at around 1650 so it's not as if that it is going to go to like you know 33 3400 within the next 2 years it might happen but very very less probability of that happening so if i consider it from a strength of a bank perspective hdfc bank is really good but if i consider it from a growth perspective then which bank do i see very good growth then it might be some small finance bank now these are typically smaller in size so if i pick something like let's say ujjivan small finance or or equitas small finance then these are likely to grow very fast but unfortunately these small finance bank have very high level of risk also so within these two categories if we discount this that you know what we want growth also and we don't want to take like crazy amount of risk also then accordingly my favorite stock here would be something like idfc first bank i have already built my position on it and i am sitting on very healthy profits already now if you have a slightly longer vision the only thing that you need to keep in mind about idfc first bank is when is it likely to double if the market cap of idfc first bank doubles then it is very likely that even the stock price is going to double now if you take a look at the market cap of idfc first bank you will see that it is approximately like 50000 crore now do you know the market cap of hdfc bank it is almost 20 times that of idfc first bank now we are not saying that you know idfc first bank is going to become the next HDFC FC Bank, all that. we don't need to believe in it all we simply need to ask a very basic question ki bhai dekho hdfc bank's market cap is 20 times that of idfc first bank so can idfc first bank from this point can it grow to a valuation of 100000 crore the short answer seems like a yes that india overall economy wise is growing really fast our finance sector is going really fast banks are getting capital at a crazy rate on top of that mr vedyanathan who runs the idfc first bank who is the leader of idfc first bank he has has helped grow icici bank also so he has already been through that journey once of getting a small bank and making it big so why can't he do the same for idfc first bank so therefore it is one of my favorite stocks in the banking segment so next comes the fmcg segment now fmcg are products which we use on everyday basis toothbrush toothpaste shampoo all this stuff which is my favorite company you already know it it is hindustan unilever i'll keep this discussion really short because i already made a lot of videos on it now why is hindustan unilever my favorite stock now 
very quickly let me first and foremost show you that it is a consistent compounder stock now what does that mean it just simply means that you draw this line here and it is likely to follow this line only that for example you can literally extrapolate it and most likely the stock price is going to follow like this only right on this so this is like consistent compounding that it keeps on growing at a CAGR of roughly 15 percent FD mein paisa dalne se achha, probably put it in Hindustan Unilever that is my perspective this is not the perspective per se because of course there is volatility in the stock market so you don't need to follow that philosophy I personally follow that philosophy that instead of putting my money in FD Hindustan Unilever I trust from that perspective now why is that the case well to cut the long story short Hindustan Unilever is wonderful at doing three things first thing is that it is excellent in terms of doing customer research there is something called as human centered design practice human centered design practice mein hota hai ki there is like entire vertical which is run by consulting companies like McKinsey BCG all this stuff now what they do is that they do market research they will go and start following people not like creeps but they will just literally go start following people observe their buying habits ki kahan pe dal rahe cart mein where are they looking while buying and going around in the shopping center Vagera, vagera. They will try to ascertain customer preference. Now, human centered design means that humans are kept at the central reference point before designing any product, putting it somewhere, etc. etc. So, companies like Hindustan Unilever have a lot of money which they can pour into these type of research, right? So, this is point one. Point two is that company has a lot of massive pricing power. They are very, very good in terms of pricing. For example, when inflation problem was there, Hindustan Unilever stock fell to roughly like 1900-2000. I came out with a video also, bulk buying done. Now I'm not buying anything of HUL. Why did I buy it? It's very simple because that any bout of inflation that has happened in our economy, at least for the last 15 years, every single time Hindustan Unilever has been able to increase the prices of its product. Just in the last two years, HUL products have easily gone up, easily gone up by at least 20 to 25 percent. So this is the second key reason. Now the third key reason is their ability to launch products fast, build marketing campaigns fast. If the product is failing, again, their customer research comes into the picture and they are able to pull those products out. So this speed of execution is something that HUL is really good at and therefore it is one of my favorite stocks or rather the favorite stock in the FMCG sector. So the next industry that we are going to speak about is the consumer durable industry. Now consumer durable or FMCG mein what is the difference? So FMCG ho gaya roz marra ke products right? Toothpaste, toothbrush, all this stuff. Consumer durable, durable matlab that for example if you buy an AC you are expecting it to last for how many years? Probably like 10 years, how about a sauce all right? So no, that is not correct. Uh, basically, these days products are designed to fail. So, so consumer durables are expensive and they are typically long lasting, so to say. So these are fridge, AC, TVs, these type of products. Now here I have like two stocks which would constitute as my favorite depending on how you are looking at it. So if I have to buy something concentrated, for example, Symphony has approximately 50% market share in cooler industry in India. So that's a very concentrated player. Ki if the demand of coolers goes down in India, then Symphony is going to hurt a lot more. So it's a highly concentrated product. Now opposite can happen that Garmi bad gai and people cannot afford to buy ACs hypothetically. What is their go-to option when you know buy coolers, right? So then something like Symphony is going to benefit a lot. So if you're looking for concentrated bet, then something like Symphony is going to be my favorite stock from this category. Now if I have to pick a diversified consumer durable company, then I will pick something like VGuard. Because think about it, that consumer durable goes up when? Well, it goes up when the real estate sector goes up. When new houses are constructed, people will definitely buy ACs. Once the AC is fit, then 10 years will not happen, right? And hopefully 10 years will not happen. So from that particular perspective, construction of new real estate is a good sign that consumer durable industry will also go up. Now in this space, if you are looking for a diversified player, then VGuard is a very good stock from that angle. Why? Take a look at their breakup, where they are making their money from wires, stabilizers, they are getting into electronic products also. They also make water pumps. They also make heater, geysers. So they have a wide portfolio of products and all this goes up when the real estate sector goes up. Even wiring, for example, you're not going to replace your housing wiring every three, three years, right? So once the house is constructed, it's done. So if the housing sector is getting picked, for example, it is getting picked right now, then it is likely that something like VGuard is going to bounce back quite aggressively. Okay, so then comes the next industry, 
which is the gaming industry. Now the exciting part about the gaming industry is that if you pick gaming on one side and on the opposite side, if you pick Hollywood, Bollywood, OTT platforms, sab kuch combine karo, then also gaming industry is already big or it is likely to become bigger. I was reading this study somewhere. So to cut the long story short, gaming industry is a massive industry. Now there are different different types of games. Now I haven't really researched the US market, probably I should and I will probably make an updated video there. But as of now, my favorite gaming stock comes from India. And India is right now into offline gaming per se. Why? I'll explain that in a minute. The stock's name is Delta Corp. I've spoken about this stock earlier. Why is it my favorite stock? So two, three reasons there. One is that Delta Corp is doing exactly what? Gambling. Okay. So let's just say it out what it is doing. It runs casinos, mostly in Goa. 90% of their business comes from Goa casinos, right? These are physical in nature. Only 10% comes from online stuff. Now online is great because it is scalable but the problem with online is that a lot of regulations will keep on getting changed all that headache is there. Physical aapne bana liya, then the cost of entry for a new player is going to be really really tough. It's not as if ki kisi ka bhi man kara, they come with their boat or ship casino laga dete hai, right it's not that easy right so there are barriers to entry that have been built by delta corp right so this is the primary reason that offline gaming is a much more sticky industry it might happen that their business will not grow from let's say 100 crores to 1000 crore overnight which can happen in an online world but their business looks slightly more stable yes regulation is a big threat you need to pick your bets accordingly it is risky, no doubt about that. But compared to online gaming, this offline gaming model is slightly more sticky. If we study the industry from a customer side, gamblers get addicted. So they have a sticky customer base. Okay, so the next industry is the tech industry. And if I have to pick my favorite stock, it would be Meta. When I made the Meta video the last time, please go and check it here. So you will have a lot of fun reading comments. People say, hey, you have gone crazy. Meta, you are supporting. It has gotten crushed by 50%, this, that. Meta has been a multi-bagger stock for me at that scale, right? So I had aggregated so much of Meta stocks in the last one year and it has given massive breakout. Why? I told the same story there also and I will repeat a condensed version of it here also. Take a look at this. Meta released something called as Threads and look at the adoption time to reach 1 million users. It took Meta one hour, one hour to reach 1 million users. Chat GPT ke baare mein log bolte rehte hai. Chat GPT has been disruptor this that. It took five days for Chat GPT to hit the same number. And then accordingly other companies are ranked. Now think about it that a company like Meta can launch a product and within one hour they can get one million users on it. Now why is that? That's the central question. Well, here is the snippet. Now how many active users? I'm not talking about download this that and all that faltu ke number. I'm talking about active users of WhatsApp every single day. 2 billion users, that's a fraction of a population. So that's how strong Facebook slash Meta is. See, every tech company can duplicate tech. That is not a problem. But the distribution of that tech will always be a challenge. You might, many of you would have been thinking, Ki, why did I not name something like Google in this? The reason is distribution, right? We need everyday Google products. Google is a very strong company. But when it comes to distribution, Meta has that thing going for it that if they want to increase adoption of any social media network, it can come out and release that product any day it like and it will be a hit from day one. Why? Because they can throw that at you through WhatsApp messaging, whatnot. And unke liye it is completely free. So this is the central point that you need to keep in mind. Whenever you find something like Meta at a massive discount, I at least would be buying it and I have continued to buy it. I have a lot of faith on that stock. Of course, a lot of things can go wrong in tech, but please understand that technology can be duplicated, but distribution cannot. Distribution is a massive important game for all these tech companies and Meta has a significant advantage here. Okay, so the next company comes from the luxury segment. Now I told you the Balenciaga story at the start of this video. Now you'll think that my favorite luxury brand would be Gucci, this, that, right? No, it's Apple product, right? So why is Apple my favorite luxury brand? Because Apple is a luxury brand, that's it, right? Now, just to outline the idea how it has become luxury over time, you will think, yeah, electronics, airport, they're selling like iPhones and this, that. Take a look at the price rise of iPhone. It is absolutely crazy that iPhone 4 in 2010, only 13 years have gone by. It used to be high end. So high end used to be $300. Now it is $1,099. 
so prices have gone up by almost three and a half times over the last 10 11 years for its product this is part a you will think yeah three and a half times you to why i said yeah top chal gai, right top is literally here because now when you go and buy iphone what do you buy along with it you buy accessories and you also buy insurance so the point is that the profit margin on this would have at least gone up by six times right six seven times easily because of this reason so yes that's the story from the apple side go back to 2010 and ask yourself that can you ever ever imagine yourself buying a one one and a half lakh rupee phone no, you'll say, yeah, man, I'll put one and a half, two lakh rupees more, and I'll buy a car. What type of a person would buy like a one and a half lakh rupee phone? Now, again, continue to look in the mirror, and you might be holding an iPhone, right? So, yeah, it's just like crazy story that how luxury is being sold today. Now, again, continue to look in the mirror, and you might be holding an iPhone, right? So, yeah, it's just like crazy story that how luxury is being sold to you in the name of electronics. So that is what Apple is doing. People line up to buy Apple products. Apple, again, can come out with any random product and they can sell you off at a massive profit margin, 50, 60% profit margin. That's a massive moat to have. No other luxury company in the world, according to me, competes with Apple on that front. Yes, you can give me examples of certain luxury brands that might be commanding 80, 90%. But the point is that the opportunity for Apple to come out with a series of products, give add-ons like insurance that only Apple commands as of now in the luxury space. Okay, so the final industry is the NBFC slash credit card. I'm linking the two and you will understand why. Now this industry is growing like crazy in India. Now the adoption of credit debit card is going up in India at a massive volume, massive pace. Which is my favorite company in this space? It is SBI cards. Why is that? SBI, strong brand industry massive growth already happening now nbfc's face a specific problem they get regulated quite aggressively very often by the government now that can happen for the credit card or card payment space also now sbi cards business is very limited to cards right so that's one so almost all the regulations that had to come or major regulations that had to come in this space has already come now i'm not guaranteeing that more regulations cannot come but compared to an nbfc it is slightly more protected add to this the fact that it got recently listed not very old listing so to say the price discovery on the stock is already complete so going forward as the credit card market market picks up given the SBI brand the push that they are doing it is very likely that this company is only going to grow from this particular point to learn more how you can beat AI and chat GPT and grow in your career do check out the workshop that is free for the first 1000 people link is in the description and comment box this is where we will stop the video as a next step I would encourage you to watch this particular video which talks about how you can build your portfolio once you understand these 10 stocks start building your portfolio so do watch this particular topic it will give you more clarity on how you can design your own portfolio so do go and check it out and i will see you very soon